Good morning. I was just told the speakers will be on in a moment. I'd like to welcome you all here this morning. This is a special Sabbath in many ways. So beautiful sunshine outside welcomes you. We want you to know you are welcomed by the Pawpaw Church. We have many visitors here today, and we're extremely excited for the reason that you're here, for the baptism especially, the uh, Bergman family. And for all other visitors who are here, either in person or online, thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Before we start our actual worship, we have a few announcements to take care of that we think are important for our people here. So hopefully you can hear me. I'll project as much as possible until the speakers get on. A special note for those that are high school or age, or anyone that needs to wear off some Thanksgiving dinner, this announcement's for you. Next Saturday night uh, will be a fun time at Sky Zone at 7 o'clock. And the high schoolers have invited anybody to come join them. Now we are there. Okay, now we can talk in our indoor voice. <laughs> We've been taking uh, photos for our church directory, and you probably noticed that in the foyer today. Uh, next Sabbath, we'll also uh, be doing it, and also today after church. So if you haven't gotten uh, yours done yet, those times are still very possible. Um, special announcement this afternoon is a uh, marriage of some people who have been uh, coming to our church very regularly, uh, Meg Van Donsler and uh, Rick Rowe. So keep them in your prayers today as they start a new venture in their relationship. Uh, reminder about um, this Thanksgiving Thursday, we have the large um, feeding of folks here in town, the Thanksgiving dinner, and last I heard, we about have about half of the desserts uh, lined up or reserved or that Donnell knows about, and I, I was looking for Donnell, I haven't seen her or know anything different. If you took one of the slips off the board last week saying that you will do it, it would be really helpful to her if you could get in touch, send her a message or an email, just let her know the amount you're gonna provide because we are, as a church, need to provide about 300 and I heard we're about halfway there. So um, please follow through on that. I'm gonna invite uh, Pastor Taylor to come forward. Uh, I have the beginning of a very important event here. Thank you, David. Uh, he was looking for me because I wasn't where I was supposed to be. I was busy over here chatting with a visiting uh, friend from the church family. Uh, some of you know Pastor uh, Kessia Rain Bennett. Uh, she and her family have come back to visit, so that's who I was chatting with. Sorry if I wasn't where I was supposed to be. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Anybody else glad that uh, it's back to looking like fall and not like mid-January? Amen. Amen. So, uh, as was mentioned, we get to do something really, really special today. Uh, this is on top of what is already a special Sabbath because of the hymn fest. I have the ability to stand before you and tell you that we have a young man who's given his life to Jesus Christ. Is that a good news? Amen. I'd like to invite Dylan Bergman to come forward at this time. And while he's coming forward, uh, James, I'm going to switch over to my headset. Are you ready for that? Cool. Uh, let me give Dylan the blue microphone here so you're ready. Hi, Dylan. How are you? Good. Good. No, there's people who are going to be watching along who need to be able to hear you, so hold the mic up. All right. Very good. <laughs> so, uh, you are Dylan Bergman, and uh, we haven't practiced any of this, so I'm just going to fire questions <laughs> at you, and let's see how good you do with your answers. Uh, what grade are you in? I am in sixth grade. Sixth grade. And where do you go to school? Goebbels Junior Academy. Goebbels Junior Academy. And who's your teacher? Miss Lori Randall. Miss Lori Randall. And... Uh, she, she's an okay teacher? She's a great teacher. She's a great teacher. Awesome. <laughs> so, Dylan, you and I go way back. Did you see the picture I put on Facebook? Or if, if you get our, our bulletins emailed out on a daily or on a weekly basis, if you've seen that email, did, did you see some of the things he's, this guy's put me through in the years? Uh, first, first order of business is tag, you're it. No tag backs. Um, <laughs> because for years... This guy has just always, whenever I'm standing at KJA or at GJA, he'll sneak up behind me, tag, 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 tag. <laughs> I remember, what was it, four years ago on the last day of school, I just flat out tackled you, sat on you, <laughs> and tagged you for like five minutes, and you were still up by like a billion. So, uh, 
we have gone through quite a bit together. The one that I wanted to tell you about was the picture that was on the cover of, uh, or that was on my Facebook. It's also uh, in that email I mentioned of you just slaughtering me with a pie. <laughs> so if you don't know the story on that one, uh, some of you know the Los Palmas Orphanage in the Dominican Republic. You've had an opportunity. Uh, this near and dear to the Pawpaw Church family. We've done some mission trips there. And we found out that they were going through some tough times. And so we decided that Kalamazoo Junior Academy would do a fundraising effort to try to raise money. And we were, our goal was like $500. And so we said that every classroom that averaged, I think it was like $8 a student, because that would get us to our $5, or to our $500, every classroom would be able to uh, pick one person and they would pie me in the face. Now, some classrooms, there was only a couple of kids, like, you know, four or five kids, and so a parent handed me a 50 and said, make sure you get him. And uh, now your class is one of the bigger groups there that, uh, now who was your teacher there? Um, Mrs. Alonco. Mrs. Alonco, yep, and she's here today. I see her over there. And uh, she had one of the bigger groups, and so we weren't quite sure if they would make it up to their goal, but sure enough, they did. And so I was going to take five pies to the face that day, the last day before Christmas break a couple years ago. And we, <laughs> we decided, you know what, let's do this fair. We took every student's name, we put them in little individual cups, and we let the teacher pull out a name. And the first name that was pulled out from your class's cup was Samantha. Samantha Alonco, who is probably about the most quiet and shy person, if you don't know her. Uh, if you do know her, it's a different story. Anyway, uh, she pulls it out and said, do you want a pie pastor? She said, no way. And, and so we said, okay, let's draw again. Everybody else was excited to pie me. Uh, no problem. So she said, no, we drew again. And I pulled it out and said, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And all I said was, you've got to be kidding me. And everyone was like, it's Dylan! <laughs> And sure enough, he went back and just kablooied me right in the face. Like I said, I thought I, you almost broke my nose with a pie plate. I, well, every time I inhaled for the next two days, I smelled whipped cream. <laughs> Greatest day. Greatest day. So we have been through quite a lot together. And here we are now with what is perhaps one of the biggest, most exciting things that we can do. And that's this, this opportunity to celebrate the decision you've made to give your life to Jesus Christ and to get baptized. Uh, I'm curious, why did you want to get baptized? So um, I can have a close relationship with God. And when he comes again, I can be prepared. Good answer. Now, I'm curious. One of the questions I love to ask people as they're uh, making decisions and, and giving their life to Jesus, what is your favorite thing about Jesus? It is that he gave us so many wonderful things, and he, I could be a part of his creation. Awesome. That's really cool. So this young man here, he's been doing some studies, very faithfully, diligently working on some Bible lessons. Uh, he, he attends Sabbath school. He attends church school. He's, he's got a great family. And in fact, uh, not only are your parents here, but you, you've got a small cheerleading section here, don't you? If you're here with Dylan, if you're family of Dylan's, do me a favor, just give a wave. Friends and family, there we go. You've got a whole couple of rows of people here. And no doubt, there will probably be some people, wave to the red, Dylan, wave hi to the, the red light back there. There's some people who are going to be watching on... Uh, watching video later, or they might be on live stream. But I am excited to be able to baptize you today, but first, I have a quiz. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh uh -oh is right. I have enough. You have, you have enough quizzes? I thought you said Mrs. Randall was a good teacher. She no. is. <laughs> good teachers can still give quizzes. That's right. Now, this one is a pretty easy quiz. It's got three questions. You can answer it nice and loud and clear into the microphone, but head shakes and nods and all that, that those don't count. Microphone doesn't pick those up. You've got to say it clearly in the microphone. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Dylan. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with Him? Yes. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Yes. And do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offerings, and a life of service? Yes. 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 He's already demonstrated many of these uh, commitments, uh, getting involved in our church family. Uh, I remember, and some of us remember all too well, that he's been active in cleaning bees and work bees, and, and uh, he'll even sometimes drive his tra dad's uh, tractor around. 
uh, occasionally gives people in the parking lot heart attacks as they see how close he gets to cars in his bulldozer, but that's another discussion. You've been, a, you've been serving as an assistant deacon, helping your dad out with offerings for years. You are now a, what is this uniform? Pathfinder. You are a pathfinder. And in fact, I'd like to invite, is Noel, yes, I want to invite Mr. Salgado, our club director, to come forward because he has something he would like to do on behalf of the club. We'll give him the yellow microphone so he can do this. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, Dylan, uh, as you can see, there are many people here uh, this morning. What you probably can't see is there are probably hundreds or maybe even thousands of angels also here. And they are rejoicing, high-fiving, excited, happy as I am for this day. I've been waiting for this day for the longest time. As a matter of fact, what you guys don't know is that you see him in a Pathfinder uniform now. But even before he was, a path, he was a Pathfinder, for a whole year, he would ask me if he could become a Pathfinder. Every Sabbath, every chance that he saw me, can I be a Pathfinder? Do you think I could be a Pathfinder? Do you think I would be a good Pathfinder? And let me tell you, you've been a great Pathfinder. And it is my honor this morning to not only witness this baptism, but also to pin you with the baptism pin. Only, only those that have given their life to Jesus through baptism get to receive this special pin. Uh, and this you can wear proudly in your uniform every time you wear it. So Dylan is not only a passionate pathfinder, but one of the things that you were actually memorable around the Michigan Conference for, and some in the conference office know you, or at least your handiwork for, is you are also a huge fan of camp meeting. Camp meeting is something he looks forward to year after year and will routinely put up stakes and streamers along the edge of driveways. And so uh, I don't know if he's done it at your guy's house, but he's definitely done it at your grandparents' house. Uh, your grandparents, uh, Gene, Susan, they're up here. I actually need Gene to come forward because he's going to be joining us uh, for our baptism today. Uh, some of you may know uh, Mr. Gene Foss. He is the grounds director and, and one, of our, uh, one of our distinguished leaders up at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. I don't know if he has anything that you want to say. Pass your microphone. Yeah, take a, take a moment, say a few words. One thing about dealing with uh, Pathfinders is um, when he was younger, he loved to ride what? the trams. And so, I mean, he wanted the trams. That's it. Up and down the road. And First thing in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, he's up. Grandpa, can I go ride the trams? Can I ride the trams? Can I ride the trams? Can I ride the trams? <laughs> if you know Dylan, he's going to ride the trams. He's going to ride the trams because you get tired of saying no. <laughs> <laughs> and you know where he is. Exactly. He's on the trams. That's right. Um, so one time when he was coming out after camp meeting, he came up, and I got one of the tram. I got the trams out, and he got to ride. What did we ride? About... Half an hour, just all over the place. He got to ride, and he just lo he loves it. He loves camping. He's been a great help to me, actually, believe it or not. And uh, today, when he asked me to, he asked me if I could baptize him, and I, I talked to a few people, and they said, uh, probably not. Uh, if the pastor wasn't here, and if he was out in the middle of nowhere uh, where there was no pastor, that could probably happen. But he said I could join him. But when he asked me, uh, our heart was just... Elated, I couldn't believe that uh, he'd want me to be with him. But I love him, and uh, he will be a great work for the Lord. I know he will. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right. Uh, just to give you a head start, Gene, you can head back and start getting dressed now. Dylan, we still have uh, one order of business to deal with. Church family, you've heard the request of a young man who's going to give his life to Jesus Christ in a few minutes, be baptized. And he is, uh, as a part of his vow, said that he would like to become a member of this local church, of the, the greater church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I just want to know, is there a motion, perhaps from mom in the front uh, there, motion to uh, accept him? Do we have a second? All in favor, say amen. Amen. 
All opposed, same sign. That is carried. Dylan, pending your baptism, we can welcome you into the Papa Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, I will actually give you uh, your gift now so that you can take this and set it with your mom before you go get dressed. And a new thing that we have for you, I don't know, maybe because it's your birthday today too, I wanted to do something a little bit extra. And so we're going to give you one of our brand new church t-shirts. And if you haven't seen the new back and the new church t-shirts, uh, these are really neat design, and that one is for you, sir. Thank you. And uh, I'll take your microphone, and you can drop that off with your mom, and then join me in the back to get dressed up for, for your baptism. Today's worship service is going to be different. It's our annual hymn fest. It's a time of music and spoken words, thinking specifically about this time of year, the harvest and God's goodness to all of us. I'd like to thank in advance the many, many people that you're going to see up front today that have been preparing and are taking part. And I'd like to especially thank Jan Birmingham for helping me put this together. We're going to start off with something we normally do with reflections time to put your mind in focus of the goodness of God, what he's done for you this season, this year, this week. Um, just a quiet time to be in thought. And Addison will start off with that right after I pray. <clears throat> Father, today we worship you and we praise you and we thank you for all the bounty of things you've given us. Mostly we thank you for Jesus and the plan of salvation and the privilege we have of worshiping you. Please guide our thoughts, our hearts today, and we lift them towards heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Why do we praise God? Psalm 95 verse 2 says, Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. In the 21st century, we read about the benefits of gratitude. Being grateful can change what we have into enough. A meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend, a challenge into an opportunity, mistakes into learning, and an existence into a life. But the benefits of thanking and praising God go well beyond the world's understanding of gratitude. Join us today as we praise our mighty God, our Father, our Savior, the Lord, the King of Kings, the Everlasting, the Great I Am, and his incredible gift of unconditional love for us. Yes, we gather together on this Sabbath before Thanksgiving to count our blessings.
are thankful for our greater creator God. In Steps of, to Christ, Ellen White says, God is love is written upon every open bud, upon every spire of springing grass. The lovely birds making their air vocal with their happy songs. The delicately tinted flowers in their perfection. Performing the air, perfuming the air, the lofty trees of the forest with, which, with rich foliage of living green, all testify to the tender fatherly care of our God and his desire to make his children happy. In the world where evolution assigns every molecule a matter to chance, isn't it wonderful to be able to praise God as our creator? Wow, what a million wows for the continued beauty of this decaying earth. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our grateful song of praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, Friends on earth and friends above, pleasures pure and undefiled. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our grateful song of praise. For the gift of thy dear Son, for the Spirit's victory won for the crown when life is past. Lord of all, to thee we raise songs of gratitude and praise. Our guiding God. Life is about making decisions. What we are going to eat, drink, who will we choose for spouses and friends, where we will live and worship, and how we will treat others. Some of us are impulsive and quick, jump quickly without weighing the possibilities. Others are paralyzed by fear and can't decide without question. We all make mistakes, but, and here is the good news. Our God longs to help us make the best decisions. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit him and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. I love that my brother Dylan has decided to follow my Savior's leading all the way. Amen. All the way my Savior leads me. to ask beside How could I jump her Who through life has been my guide All the way my Savior leads me And cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living bread. You lead me and keep me from falling. You carry me close to your heart and show. See you. 
fullness of his love. Oh, the sureness of his promise in the triumph of his love. When my spirit clothed in song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. Jesus led me all the way. You lead me and keep me from falling. You carry me close to your Thank you, Liz and Nicole, for that beautiful song. And Dylan, all the way the Savior has led you to this day. The ability to give your life to him, this public celebration of what an awesome Savior we have. He has led you so far, and he will continue to lead you all the days of your life. It's a wonderful opportunity to be able to baptize you, representation, a gathering of friends and family, I stand before you not just as a pastor, but as a friend. We have your grandpa here representing your family, being there to, uh, I think he's here to make sure that I actually take him up out of the baptistry when we, uh, <laughs> but I have asked your grandpa Gene to have a prayer of blessing the Holy Spirit to be upon you after your baptism. Today is a special day. It's both your birthday and it'll be your rebirth day. Amen. As a minister of the gospel, it is my great honor and privilege to be able to baptize you, Dylan, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, which art in heaven, Lord, as we read, when you were baptized, the Holy Spirit came down upon you as a dove. And Heavenly Father, we're asking right now that the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit, would come upon Dylan. Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit helps you through all your situations that you went through. We're asking for that same Holy Spirit to be with Dylan, and he goes through life, Lord. Heavenly Father, he has dedicated his life to you. We ask, Father, that he would walk in your footsteps, Lord Jesus, to be that servant that you would want him to be. I just thank you so much. And, Father, we ask that you would not only the Holy Spirit, but send those angels to be with him, Father. And we ask these things in thy sweet and precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Pod. Roy Campanella, one of the first African Americans to play baseball in the major leagues, saw his career end after an accident left him a quadriplegic in 1958. This plaque at his rehab center helped to form his philosophy for the rest of his life. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn to humbly obey. I asked for health that I might do great things, but I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of others. I was given weakness that I might feel the need for God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything that I had hoped for. I am among men most richly blessed. So Lord, as the poet on this plaque, we ask you to be our vision.
We are thankful for our faithful, changeless God. We live in a world of breakthrough changes, breakneck speed, breaking news, and broken down stuff, and painful, broken relationships. What was absolutely true yesterday is challenged today. In 1900, human knowledge doubled every 100 years. Now it doubles in less than a year, and we are quickly on our way to doubling of knowledge every 12 hours, according to one expert. But our God doesn't change, because his knowledge is complete. There are no new discoveries for him. He is the same as he was yesterday, and he will always be that way tomorrow. Best of all, he is faithful. He never gives up. He never goes away. He never stops loving us. Yes, great is his faithfulness. question this song is asking is, is he worthy? And we already know the answer to that question. We're here because the answer of that question. There is a portion of the song where the kids will be asking you all the question. And your response will be, he does. 
Okay. McCall will lead you at your part. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new?
right, if you're not already up here, it's time for children's stories so the rest of the kids can come up now. Big kids, little kids, Lathan kids, Sam kids, some of these other kids that told me they're going to come up, but I know they won't because they're too scared. Also, while the kids are coming up, please take notice in your bulletins of this insert. This is from our master plan committee, and it's just kind of a reminder of the project that we're looking at and working on. Also a reminder that any money that finds its way into these plastic cups goes to help fund this. So as these beautiful children are coming around with cups, don't be shy. Throw some, throw some money in them. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. My goodness, look at this crowd of kids. This is awesome. Well, this morning, isn't it, isn't it amazing that we get to be thankful for a worthy God? Yeah. Yes, it is. So I have a question for you. Does anybody know what this is? $20. What is it? $20. So how much is it worth? $20. Really? What if I do this? Now how much is it worth? $20. It's still worth $20? What if I do this? Still worth $20. Still worth $20? Are you sure? Yeah, even if you rip it, it's still Really? <laughs> wow. So this, what if I took it outside and ran it through the mud? Still be worth $20? You sure? Yeah. What? Okay. Now, how about this question? What happens if I ran myself outside and ran myself through the mud? Would I still be worth something? Yes. Now, what happens when life sometimes is bad to us? Maybe another kid is mean to us, or we do something wrong and we feel bad about it. Are we still worth something? Yes. Now, what about Jesus? What's Jesus worth? Nothing. What did Jesus do for us? Now, did he get, did he get mistreated? Did he get beat up? Yes. Yeah. And was he still worth something? Yes. Now, just like we, we don't have a, we're, we're priceless to Jesus, right? He's coming back just for us. Just for you and for you and for you and for you and for you, right? For all of us. He is also, and our wonderful God, are also truly priceless to us. And we are so grateful that they are worthy of our praise and our worship and our following, right? All right, does anybody want to pray for us this morning? Don't everybody volunteer at once? Nobody? Nobody? I'll pray. Lord, thank you so much for this Sabbath and for being a truly worthy God, Lord. We look forward to, to continuing to follow you and for that great day when you come back and take us home. Amen. Amen. Let's get our cups.
We are thankful for our eternal God. For many, the Thanksgiving table includes at least one empty chair. Whether by distance, division, or death, loss looms large in the family that is no longer complete. Tears shine through the, retell, the retelling of treasured memories. But our God is eternal, without beginning or end. He has always been, he is, and he always will be. We can't begin to comprehend forever. The good news is that he offers eternity to us, and we can spend it with those whom we love and miss. But best of all, we will spend forever with him. What a glorious day that will be. No, we'll never part again. There is a land of pure delight where bliss eternal reigns. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. We are trying Oh! 
for our King of Kings, depending on who you are, we run to or away from politics. We follow our favorite cable news channels, or we carefully avoid any discussion at all. But hopefully, we all pray. After all, we are citizens of another country, another kingdom, actually, we have a king. No, we have the king of kings. Amen. We look forward to that great day of Revelation 11. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks O oh Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. Because you have taken your great power and reigned to that country, to that king, we vow our all. Oh, no. 
We are thankful for our Almighty God. Amen. Who are we that we have direct, round the clock, immediate access to the most powerful being in the universe? Amen. Who are we that God craves our praise? He delights in our happiness, He comforts our souls, He supplies all of our needs. Who are we that God always listens? He inspires, he nudges, he paves the way, and he speaks to us. That power, which is beyond our comprehension, is made available to us. As we kneel this morning, I invite you to tell our almighty God how much you love him. God, we praise you and thank you for being in our lives. We thank you that you touch our lives with your grace and mercy every day. We're thankful for your loving kindness, your faithfulness to us as your people. Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation, that you so love the world that you gave your only Son that you made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. So that when you look at us, you see Jesus and not our sinful lives. We praise you for that, and we thank you for that. We're thankful that you are always acting in our behalf for our salvation every day. We praise and honor your name this morning for the gift of your Holy Spirit that comforts us and empowers us to live for you. Father, we thank you that your Holy Spirit convicts hearts to live for you. And we are thankful this morning that we witnessed the baptism of Dylan. You know, you, as our Father in heaven, you created the universe. You put the stars and the planets in place. But the greater miracle is a changed life. A person that has decided to walk with you. And so we want to support Dylan. We want to guide him as fellow believers in, as he proclaims the gospel in his life with Jesus. This morning, we want to lift up different members of our congregation because we are thankful for the power of prayer also in our lives. And we thank you that you have blessed us in many ways. We've experienced you acting on our behalf in each of our lives through the power of prayer. We lift up this morning different ones in our membership. We think of Bernie. Overacker, who is recovering from a very sore knee. We're thankful for the blessing of unity, of marriage, Meg and Rick getting married later today. Bless them in their new journey, their walk together, their new life together with you. And we think of Becky, Lynn, Dreskel, and family, the loss of a loved one, a relative, Dusty. We pray that you will comfort, surround each one who is experiencing this loss, and we thank you for the precious hope in Jesus that we have, that you're coming soon, when all death, sickness, and suffering 
ends. And we thank you for all of our families here. We pray for our families that Jesus would bring them together in fellowship and love. And we pray for Ashley's boss, Pam. Ashley is requesting prayer for Pam. You know the circumstances, and we pray that you will minister to that need this morning. Father in heaven, this is the Thanksgiving season, special Thanksgiving season. We want to renew in our hearts the joy of salvation, that you'll fill us with your truth and love, that we will praise you, give you all the honor and glory, for you are alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are thankful for our God of love. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's love endures forever, Psalms 9, verse 1 and 2. A 92-year-old, petite, proud, well-dressed, and legally blind lady moved into a nursing home. Her husband of nearly 70 years had recently passed away, making the move necessary. After a lengthy wait, the host escorted the little lady and her walker down the hallway, providing a visual description of a tiny room right down to the newly hung eyelid curtains. I love it, the new resident stated with enthusiasm. The caregiver replied, but you haven't been, even been to the room yet. That doesn't have anything to do with it, she replied. Happiness is something you decide on ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not, doesn't depend on the arrangement of the furniture, it's how I arrange my mind. I have already decided to love it. It's a decision I make every morning when I wake up. This lady knew that she was well loved by her God, so loved in fact that his love had filled her so she could share it with others. Let all things now living and sing a song of thanksgiving for our God of love.
thankful for our ever-present God. Where is God when you need him? Daniel would tell you about God in a lion's den. Elijah would reference a brook with ravens. Paul met God on a road to Damascus. Peter had first-hand experiences with God in a boat, in a garden, in a prison. And John, John saw him on a cross at Calvary. What human can be everywhere? What human can hear the tiniest of voices whispering under the loudest ones and hear them all clearly? What human can feel the physical, emotional, and spiritual pains of the billions of people at the same time? Our God is everywhere, with no boundaries of space or time. This ever-present God is available to us. The only thing we need to ask of God is, give me Jesus. justice and mercy. Psalm 89 14 says, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. God is 100% just. His law is perfect. In a society where fairness is demanded, we value justice. God is 100% mercy. He made a way of escape through his own son, whose perfect life and sacrificial death count as ours. In a society filled with sinners, we don't have, a chan don't have a chance without God's grace. When we stray from his law, his character, may we grasp for his transformative mercy. Make the next song be your prayer, especially in verse 3. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Take my heart, O oh, take and seal it with thy spirit from above. Yes, come thou fount of every blessing.
Morning, happy Sabbath. We are thankful for a generous God. Two friends, two old friends met in the street, and one of them was looking gloomy. The other asked, hey, what's going on with you? Why are you so gloomy today? I was like, well, let me tell you. Three weeks ago, my uncle died, and he left me 45 grand. I was like, that's... Really good. But wait, there's more. Two weeks, a cousin of mine that I, I didn't even know, he died, he left me about 85 grand. The friend confused was like, it seems like you're getting a lot of blessings. Why are you so gloomy? He was like, wait, there's more. Last week, my great aunt died and she left me almost a quarter of a million dollars, clear, clear and free. With a tone of jealousy, the friend said, why are, you, why are you gloomy? I mean, you have gotten so many blessings. He said, check this out. This week is Friday and nothing. I have not received nothing this week. <laughs> Are we the same with God's blessings? Do we take God's blessings for granted? Remember James 1.17. It says that all good and perfect gifts are from God. So let's remember how generous God is with us and not take for granted all the blessings that he gives us every day. And this week... All the offering is going to uh, MAP, Michigan Advanced Partners, which helps with uh, church projects, camp meetings, and uh, schools. And also, in the near future, keep on thinking about also 
giving offering to PPAC member care and community services. Uh, we are a serving uh, church and we serve the community and uh, we need funds for that as well. Be blessed. acceptable, Lord, for you deserve it. Amen. We are thankful for our relentless God. Are you ever tired? Do you ever consider escaping from God and his plan for you? Have you ever wondered why God keeps hanging out in your neighborhood, why he doesn't give up on you, or the entire lot of us? Do you hear that still small voice encouraging you to put your trust in him? Psalm 139 says, where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Yes, our God is relentless because he loves us so much. We can't give up now.
have to climb and there will be battles that I will have to fight but victory or defeat it's up to me to decide but how can I expect to win if I never try? I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Never said there wouldn't be trials, never said I wouldn't fall, never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel all hope is gone, I'll just lift my head up to the sky. And say, help me to be strong. Oh, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody.
our Savior, our substitute, our salvation. The attributes of God are endless, but above all, we are most grateful for his ability to save us, his willingness to forgive us, his desire to keep us rather than throwing us away. He put his carefully crafted and very expensive plan of salvation into motion. He's the ruler of the universe, but he wasn't satisfied until he secured our redemption. Ephesians 1.7, it says, In him we have redeemeth though in blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Our unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable God sends his son to live a perfect life. Pay the wages of my sin. Rise again and prepare a place for me. So today, we humbly bow to give thanks because he is God alone. <clears throat> You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are not alone from before time began. You were on your throne and you are God alone. And right now, when the good times and bad, you are on your throne, and you are God alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. And that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You were on your throne, and you are God alone. And right now, when the good times and bad, you were on your throne, and you are God alone. You're unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's what you are. You're unchangeable, unshakable, 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 unstoppable. That's what you are. You are God alone from before time began. You were on your throne, and you are God alone. And right now, when the good times and bad, you were on your throne, and you are God alone. You're unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. unstoppable. That's what you are. That's what you are. You're unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, unshakable, unstoppable. unstoppable. That's what you are. That's what you are. Hallelujah. You have won. Hallelujah. 
Have you been blessed so far, church family? Yes. All right, I, I do know uh, we're getting to the end of our program. You've been sitting for a while. I need you to do me a favor. I need everybody to stand up. Yes, everybody stand up. And uh, we're actually going to, while you're standing up, you know, it, it kind of is a little bit of elbow room. Do us a favor and kind of make a big circle around. You use up the aisles, use up the, the sides. Let's make some big circles around the church. Just kind of move a little bit. And uh, we're going to get ready to sing our last song of the day. That's Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. So go ahead, slide on out. Uh, don't feel like you have to be single file. Get a little cozy. You can do two in the aisles if you need to, but... Head to your spots. While we're going there, I do want to take just a moment and acknowledge a lot of hard work went into today's program. I want to thank Jan Birmingham and David Burghart for coordinating this program. Big thank you to them. Also, a big thank you to our audiovisual team. Uh, they had to put in a lot of hard work for today. So thank you to James and Abby and Jacob and Caden for your hard work today. And I don't know about you, church family, but we are thankful for a personal God. Amen? Amen? In this church, we celebrate our Church of Refuge values. You see them on the wall. Worship, learn, belong, proclaim. In Paw Paw, we are particularly fond of belonging. We work hard at building and maintaining strong relationships. And these are the ties that bind us to each other, to this church, and to its mission. But our real tie must be to God, the God we worship the one we learn about, and the one that we proclaim to others. Jeremiah 50 verse 5 says, They will come and bind themselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. Yes, blessed be the tie that binds us to God, to each other, and to all beyond these doors who need Him. Sing now our, our song of praise, Blessed be the tie that binds. Blessed be the tie going to invite my colleague, Pastor Cassia Rain. I mentioned her earlier. I'm going to have her have our closing benediction. I'll give her the purple mic, Abby. And uh, we'll have an opportunity to pray. Pastor Cassia. Saints of God, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, our hearts are so full of gratitude for your goodness toward us, completely undeserved and yet unreserved on your part. Thank you, God, for the friends and family that share our lives, for the warmth of a church family. Thank you, God, for home and for life and for joy and music. God, we thank you that we are your people, predestined, loved, created, adopted, redeemed, crowned in glory and honor and clothed in your righteousness. Being justified, therefore, by faith, we have peace with you, God, and have obtained access into this grace wherein we stand. So send us forth with your blessing, praise in our hearts and on our lips. For your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Have a happy Thanksgiving this week. And may the Lord be with you.